Mr. Kim arrives at the White Tiger Force office. He opens the door and sees a butt-naked person in front of him. Mr. Kim gets confused and the naked man notices him. The man wears his shirt and claims that youngsters these days have no common sense. He asks for Mr. Kim's resume, but our protagonist is distracted by what he is seeing. Lee Du Jiu, the head manager, then announces the start of Mr. Kim's interview. Mr. Kim is interviewed while the manager is panless. The manager finds him fascinating for not having a name. Mr. Kim nervously says his surname, but because of his low voice, he he gets kicked out. He walks away and tries to go out. Just then, he remembers his daughter and he turns back. He then sees the manager smiling at him. He likes Mr. Kim's resume and his interesting background as a rebel. Mr. Kim then challenges the manager to another interview. The manager then asks him for a punch and Mr. Kim gives him what he asked for. Mr. Kim kicks the manager so hard that the office below hears the impact. The manager flew to the wall and Mr. Kim followed it up with a knee kick. He thought that he asked for an athlete, but Master Zhu sent him a beast. The manager grabs Mr. Kim fists and punches him away. He starts to fight back and Mr. Kim dodges. A person from downstairs comes to complain but gets shocked by the monsters in front of him. The manager attacks using the door, but Mr. Kim blocks it. Mr. Kim asks if he can use his weapon. The manager agrees and Mr. Kim kicks his face. Mr. Kim lets out a barrage of punches and the manager is starting to get hurt. Mr. Kim then uses his one-inch punch and the manager felt that one. Mr. Kim continues with his heavy punches and claims that he didn't use his weapon because he can't kill someone in an interview. The manager fights back in frustration and sends Mr. Kim flying. They continue fighting as the manager explains what the White Tiger forces do. They are willing to do anything as long as they receive money. The manager sends Mr. Kim flying and continues to beat him up while explaining the money-related things. He asks if Mr. Kim has questions, but he disappears. Mr. Kim appears behind him, asking about welfare, and the manager assures him that they have insurance companies. Mr. Kim buries the manager's head on the wall as he claims that he likes it, but he doesn't like serving a leader. The manager pulls himself out along with the wall and gets mad. He then passes Mr. Kim for the first part of the interview. The second round is to protect a client. The manager attacks the bystander. The man pisses himself off and sees Mr. Kim pitying him. When he thought he was dead, the manager missed his punch. He notices threats handled by Mr. Kim. Mr. Kim kicks him on the wall, and the manager notices that the whole room is covered in threats. He tells Mr. Kim to wait because his new furniture is getting torn and destroyed. Mr. Kim clenches his fists, and the manager passes him. The two bicker, and another person arrives. He is the deputy director of the White Tiger Forces. The director stops the two because there is a big job. The former deputy prime minister's granddaughter is missing. The manager remembers on Sian Hyo. They confirm that the granddaughter is a troublemaker in school and has been forced to transfer many times. She has now been missing for one month, but her parents still receive messages from her, and she never receives a call. The manager smells something fishy and assigns it to Mr. Kim. The director didn't disagree, and also recognize that Mr. Kim is a monster. Days later, Mr. Kim is introduced as a new teacher at Yangshan High School. As he introduces himself, a student picks a fight with him and claims that there are rankings in their school based on fighting skills. Hyun Ti, the new teacher killer, challenges Mr. Kim to an interview, to which Mr. Kim agrees. The students attack him, but Mr. Kim dodges every attack and easily flips them. The director wonders why the head manager immediately assigned the task to Mr. Kim. He claims that Mr. Kim should get a taste of the dirty side of money. Meanwhile, Mr. Kim calmly wipes out the delinquents and announces the start of the class. The students argue over how they got defeated. Mr. Kim ends the first period and goes to the washroom. Hyun Teek brings his gatekeeper crew brothers with him, and they attack Mr. Kim. Later, the three delinquents apologize to Mr. Kim. Mr. Kim then proposes something to them. He whispers to Don Jeong, and the student gets surprised. Don Jeong then whispers it to the others, and the three bow down to Mr. Kim. It turns out he offers them a way to be exempt from military enlistment. He then asks them where they would go if they were a woman who ran away from home. They then mention the runaway families. They also mention that a girl can go to their boyfriend's home. Mr. Kim then instructs them to find out everything related to the granddaughter of the former deputy prime minister. After the three escorted Mr. Kim, they ran away after remembering that the girl in the picture is Jun Seong's girlfriend. Jun Seong is known for killing people with a machete. Mr. Kim then asks if he is a mad dog. Hyun Teek agrees that Jun Seong is dangerous. Hyun Teek freezes upon seeing Mr. Kim. Later, the three apologized again to Mr. Kim. They describe how dangerous Jun Seong is. Meanwhile, Jun Seong is beating up an uncle who cheated on their card game. He brings out a knife and cuts the uncle's fingers. Just then, someone informs Jun Seong that his juniors are greeting him. Don Jeong bravely goes inside, but they are blocked. The fat kid tries to punch him 
But Mr. Kim easily knocks the fat kid down. Everyone panics when they see an old man with glasses who can fight. In a flashback, Mr. Kim shows the gatekeeper crew what he can do. Mr. Kim then apologizes and asks for Jun Seon. In a flashback, Don Joon worries about going to Jun Seon's base. Mr. Kim tells them not to worry because he invited an expert in this field. Back to the present, the delinquents attack Mr. Kim, but Hyung Min from the PH crew punches the delinquent. Mr. Kim asks another person what to do next. Somebody appears and talks badly about the delinquent's form group. A delinquent blocks him, but the person buries the delinquent on the ground. It turns out the expert is Seon Ho, the crew head of KSM. The delinquents attack together, but Seon Ho and Hyung Min easily fend them off. Seon Ho then confronts Jun Seon, and the latter attacks with an axe. Seon Ho dodges every attack and counters with a barrage of punches. He punches punches Jun Seong away, and Jian Seong suddenly attacks him with a knife. Mr. Kim saves Seon Ho, and he now sees Mr. Kim on the cooler side. They let Jun Seong run away, and Seon Ho claims that this is the best method. Jun Seong returns to his house and surprises a girl. He asks for the money bag and shoves the girl aside. The girl turns out to be An Da Young, the former deputy minister's granddaughter. They bicker, and suddenly they hear footsteps approaching their unit. The door opens, and Jun Seong screams in fear. Mr. Kim's group arrives at Jun Seong's place and Don Jeong is sure that the girl is there. They head into the building as Mr. Kim recalls the head manager's words about how much he gets paid. They arrive, but they see the door wide open. Mr. Kim thinks someone got there before them. Jun Seon is captured by a squint-eyed gangster. The squint-eyed gangster is asking Jun Seon to pay back what he owes. Just then, Mr. Kim arrives and sees Da Young. He grabs her, but Da Young asks to bring Jun Seon as well. Mr. Kim apologizes and tells her that he only works according to his pay. The squint-eyed gangster stops them and orders his underling to attack Mr. Kim. Mr. Kim uses the door as a shield and kicks the gangster away. The squint-eyed gangster asks where he is from, and Mr. Kim answers. Answers him. At that moment, Seon Ho thinks it is his chance to do his revenge while Mr. Kim is showing his back. He still has a grudge against Mr. Kim. Mr. Kim fights the rest of the gang, and Seon Ho sees a knife. Just then, the squint eyed gangster holds Da Young hostage, but Mr. Kim kicks him away. Mr. Kim commends Seon Ho for not doing what he was thinking. Seon Ho can't help but cry. Later, the former deputy prime minister learns that Da Young has been found. The old man worries that the White Tigers will dig deeper into this matter. The assistant assures him that they only work for what they are paid. Da Young asks, who ordered Mr. Kim? He didn't disclose and just uttered the feelings of a parent who lost a child. Da Young asks Mr. Kim what is the one thing that kills the youth in South Korea. Dan claims it is family. She loathes her family. Mr. Kim tells her to stop because he will only do what he was ordered to do. Mr. Kim then confirms the end of the request and assures them that no information will go out. Mr. Kim then later receives a party for accomplishing his first mission. Mr. Kim declines to eat the cake and asks for the next mission. The manager thinks of it, but there's none. Mr. Kim is given a three-day break in the meantime. Mr. Kim finds things suspicious. The payment is abnormally high. Continuous emphasis on keeping the matter a secret. Mr. Kim is anxious, but recalls the head manager's words not to pry too much into a finished mission. He calls Min Jai and is currently staging at Han Su's house. Min Jai laughs at Mr. Kim for teaching history class. The gatekeeper crew sees him smiling, and they cheerfully greet him. Mr. Kim dodges them all while telling Min Jai goodbye. He changes back to his ominous face. They praise Mr. Kim for catching Da Young, and they mention that she is suffering from a mental illness. She always claims that someone is out there to kill her, and that's why she ran away. And we see Da Young hurting her mother and running away from her parents again. Mr. Kim realizes that something is wrong. Meanwhile, the director asks the head manager why he accepted the mission in the first place. The head manager explains that he always gets requests from the old man to find someone. However, the old man kills them later. It is indeed suspicious, but what is important is that he receives payment. The director worries that the granddaughter will also be killed, but the manager doesn't care. He reminds the director to work according to their pay. He wonders if Mr. Kim has been enlightened by this mission. The gatekeeper crew helped Mr. Kim find Da Young's school record and saw Mr. Kim's ominous look. Mr. Kim notices how the homeroom teacher changed within two months. He knows this is a case of being taken care of if you find out something. Meanwhile, Da Young returns to Jun Seong's house. In a flashback, Da Young borrows her mother's card to buy something. She registers it on her phone and notices an unfamiliar hotel transaction. She thinks her mother is cheating but also thinks that it might only be a friendly gathering. However, her mother went to the same hotel the next week. Da Young plans to tell her father, but she doesn't want to hurt him. In the end, she asks one of their family employees to tell her mother. Days later, the employee is kicked out. She treated her mother as a whore, and she went astray. She changes schools and asks her homeroom teacher for help, but the teacher goes missing. Da Young borrowed her mother's phone to find evidence. She only finds a photo of the hotel dinner. Soon, her grandfather visits her and asks her if there's anything wrong. She 
She cries, tells the old man that her mother is cheating, and shares all her findings so far. The old man's face grimaced, and he asked if it was true. Da Young claims she has evidence. She shows the photo to the old man, who tells her that he'll do something about it. He apologizes and hugs Da Young. Da Young cries as she checks the photo again and sees a reflection on the spoon. She freezes, and the old man asks if she saw it. The grandfather asks if she saw the VIP card on the table. The old man claims it is faster to find out if they check the VIPs at the hotel. Da Young felt gross and puked on the spot. Her grandfather tells her not to worry. However, the old man actually saw the reflection. The old man had a fair issues before. To solve it, he lets his son marry the woman he had an affair to avoid the issue. He must clean up everything, even if it is a family member. Jun Seon calls Da Young crazy, but she doesn't have anywhere to go. She wants someone to help her. The director orders Mr. Kim not to act individually. Mr. Kim ends the call and remembers Da Young's words. Seon Ho reminds him of the director's words. However, he wants to take action. Jun Seon beats up Da Young for putting him in danger. Just then, the squint-eyed gangster calls him. He threatens Jun Seon to pay his debt and, if possible, offer human organs. Jun Seon looks at Da Young, and he agrees to do business with the squint-eyed gangster. He ends the call and approaches Da Young. He strangles her after remembering that Da Young is from a rich family. Mr. Kim's group arrives later and discovers them missing. Mr. Kim notices Da Young's shoe and concludes that there was some struggle. It is a kidnapping. Jun Seon calls Da Young's mother, but the old man answers instead. He then asks to send a billion for Da Young. Da Young's mother faints upon hearing that it is a kidnapping. However, the old man doesn't want to negotiate. He just treated them as flies. The squint-eyed gangster threatens Jun Seon to talk to the mother instead, so she can easily get scared. However, Jun Seon mentions that Da Young told him that her mother is a cheater. The old man freezes as he continues listening to the two. He then tells them that he will send money. They end the call, and the old man tells his assistant to get ready. Meanwhile, Mr. Kim's group has prepared their crews, and Mr. Kim talks to someone over the phone. He talks about an offer with Jin Chao. Meanwhile, Section Chief Nam tells someone on the phone not to worry as he is on his way. In a flashback, Park Jin Chao recruits Chief Nam to his mercenary group, Ares, a team of those who specialize in war. Chief Nam worries, though, because he is awkward with Mr. Kim after what he did to his daughter. Just then, Jin Chao receives a call from Mr. Kim and sends out Chief Nam so he can make amends with Mr. Kim. Chief Nam meets Mr. Kim's group. Hyun Min unlocks Da Young's phone. Afterward, the old man's henchmen try to bait out Jun Seong's group. Just then, a group of riders attack the person with the money bag and snatch the bag. Jun Seong is surprised to see the money. He betrays his group and drives off. However, Seon Ho finds him after using the couple app on Da Young's phone. Jun Seon changes his path, but a motorcycle jumps from a flyover. Mr. Kim strangles him and asks for Da Young's location. He then confesses that Da Young is going to be trafficked overseas. Meanwhile, the squid-eyed gangster meets the Yakuza group, Sacred Celebration Assembly. Just then, Chief Nam appears and introduces himself to them. Yakuza General Teki confronts Chief Nam. He attacks Chief Nam with everything while the latter assesses the Yakuza's skills. Chief Nam fights back and calls him clumps. He beats up Teki and corners him with his own knife. He finds Da Young and tells her not to worry anymore. Teki laughs and three Yakuza executives appear. Teki also claims they also sent executives somewhere. Twin executives face Mr. Kim's group. Teki shouts how he is proud that they are better than the Koreans. However, the blonde-haired executive stabs Teki, intending to include Chief Nam. But Chief Nam grabbed the blade in time. The executive thanks Teki for his dedication. Chief Nam thinks they are crazy. Meanwhile, Seon Ho confronts the executives who immediately attack him. The twin executives smile ominously. Seon Ho felt at that time that the twins are good at killing and he is in an unfavorable game. Mr. Kim appears and the twins attack him. However, Mr. Kim easily swatted one of them. One of the twins feels like he is at death's door. He can see an overwhelming strength in Mr. Kim. Mr. Kim one-sidedly beats up the other twin while the latter keeps their information a secret. Mr. Kim doesn't worry because someone is dealing with it. Meanwhile, Chief Nam is fighting against two executives, but he is having a hard time in a two versus one fight. They notice that Chief Nam is using military martial arts. Chief Nam fights back and uses his close quarter combat. Just as he starts, the blonde-haired executive stops him and recognizes his fighting style. The blonde-haired executive claims that he is also from a KL, a mercenary group. He tells Chief Nam not to be wary and asks if he is saving a hostage. With his silence, the blonde-haired executive laughs and starts picking out the hostages. He kills one because he doesn't feel it's Chief Nam's target. He continues killing the hostages and Chief Nam tries to calm down. Seeing that Chief Nam is thinking a lot, he grabs Da Young. Chief Nam panics, knowing that the blonde-haired executive is also from the AKL, 
and won't hesitate to kill Da Yang. He then thinks hard about what to do next. Meanwhile, Jun Xiang is taken care of by the old man's henchmen. The assistant notices the Yakuza executives and requests additional force. Head manager Lee Daju hears the old man and calls Mr. Kim, but the latter is currently on a call. Mr. Kim leads his group to Da Yang's location thanks to his friend. Xiang Ho is glad, but he wonders how they located her. Jin Chiao actually made Chief Nam wear a trackable anklet designed by his daughter. Chief Nam finds it unuseful, but he shows it to the Yakuza. One Yakuza member claims it is an anklet for sex offenders. Chief Nam claims he is there to capture a criminal. The blonde-haired executive wonders why his face changed when he grabbed Da Yang. Chief Nam claims that she is his type, and that's why he reacted. However, the blonde-haired executive still doubts him. Chief Nam takes a stance and claims that he is being tracked right now. Meanwhile, Mr. Kim's group arrives at the docks. Chief Nam managed to bring down the Yakuza members except for the blonde-haired executive. The blonde-haired executive realizes that the anklet is not for sex offenders. Chief Nam reminds him of the AKL way of doing everything to complete the mission. The blonde-haired executive offers him a job, but Chief Nam refuses because he already has one. He then sheathes out his katana and attacks Chief Nam. Chief Nam gets gets surprised by the blonde-haired executive's speed. He realizes that the blonde-haired executive is stronger than the person he knows. Meanwhile, Mr. Kim's team discovers a lot of ships. They are not sure which one got Da Yang. He tells the young ones to keep away from this matter. He then confronts the Yakuza mob, and Sean Ho wonders what is wrong with Mr. Kim. Don Jong claims he is luring everyone out to locate the correct ship. Mr. Kim beats up the Yakuza members on the port as noisily as he can. However, Chief Nam is currently tied up, and the Yakuza hear noises outside. They can't contact Contact the twin executives, and the blonde-haired executive realizes something is weird. He goes out and sees Mr. Kim soloing the mob outside. Mr. Kim senses something and dodges the blonde-haired executive's attack. The Yakuza ferociously attack, but Mr. Kim blocks everything. He tells Mr. Kim that Chief Nam is already dying. He laughs at the fact that Chief Nam's savior is a retired old man. Just then, he notices that his hands are tied with threads, and Mr. Kim tells him not to underestimate Chief Nam. Chief Nam starts attacking his captors and uses the anklet to burn the rope. They take Da Young hostage, but he easily trashes the Yakuza members. Mr. Kim asks the blonde-haired man why he left Chief Nam and claims that he is still not retired. He is still active on duty. A bleeding Chief Nam continues beating up the Yakuza members inside the ship. Da Young witnessed everything, and Chief Nam told her to go with him. However, Da Young shouts and calls him a pervert. She totally believed that he was a sex offender. The mighty Chief Nam got hurt by words. He tries to clear up the misunderstanding, but a huge and menacing Yakuza member appears. Meanwhile, Mr. Kim scares the blonde-haired executive and makes him back off with his two pinkies cut off. Mr. Kim reminds him that Yakuza cut off their pinkies when they retire. The Yakuza gets mad, and Mr. Kim beats him up. The Yakuza are sent flying, and Mr. Kim continues attacking. However, the Yakuza starts fighting back and announces that he will do his best now. The Yakuza starts his CQC zone, but Mr. Kim approaches him. The Yakuza tries to end it with one strike, and the two pass by each other. He only got to cut Mr. Kim's glasses while he got his face messed up and his katana broken. Feeling humiliated, he tries to attack Mr. Kim. Just then, they hear a loud shout and scold the blonde-haired executive. The huge man asks why there is a fly hanging around the ship. The blonde-haired executive apologizes, but Mr. Kim shuts him up. Mr. Kim then calls out to the man to come down. The huge man can't believe he got called out. He turns out to be the vice president of the assembly. A member reports that Interpol caught wind of them. He sighs and drops Chief Nam into the water. The assembly is then ordered to prepare to sail. The vice president then orders them to dispose of Mr. Kim. However, Mr. Kim easily outmaneuvers them and dives into the water. He saves Chief Nam, but Yakuza members also dive into the water. Mr. Kim easily kills them and comes out of the water. Just then, Chan, Hyun Ti, and Hyun Min appear to support Mr. Kim. As they pull out Chief Nam, they see a busy ship with Yakuza members. Meanwhile, Seon Ho and Don Jong sneaked into the ship, and Seon Ho discovered a gun. He wants to be acknowledged by Mr. Kim. He loads bullets in the gun and confidently announces that he will take over the ship. Just then, they hear the vice president walking in their direction. Direction. The two hide as the vice president gets stuck in the door because of his huge bill. Just then, the Yakuza notice a small boat following them. The vice president wonders if it is Mr. Kim. They hear screams and discover dead members. They continue hearing screams from the basement and they panic. The vice president shouts at them for being scared. He then volunteers to take action. He goes down to the basement and discovers 
friends in the room. Mr. Kim suddenly jumps into him, but he easily counters. As he talks about wiping out the AKL, Fred's wrap around his arm, and Mr. Kim attacks him. However, the vice president comes back with a powerful punch. Mr. Kim attacks back, and the members can only hear the fierce sounds of their punches. The vice president continues punching, but Mr. Kim evades all attacks. He warns that they will enter the territorial waters soon, and his men can equip themselves with guns. He corners Mr. Kim and asks what he is going to do now. Just then, they feel the boat turning suddenly. Seong Ho and Don Jong took over the ship's controls. Seong Ho randomly flips a switch, and the ship leans. Mr. Kim uses this chance to attack and strangle the vice president. Mr. Kim tells him that his kids are also good in several ways. He then asks to wrap things up now. Seong Ho manages to U-turn the ship, but it is still leaning. He randomly flips a switch again, and the ship's gate opens, letting the water flow in. Mr. Kim continues strangling the vice president, but the latter easily gets out. He proudly claims that his neck is thicker than normal, and gives Mr. Kim a heavy blow. However, Mr. Kim dodges it and attacks the vice president. The vice president suddenly feels that Mr. Kim's punches are now heavier. He fights back, but Mr. Kim dodges and kicks his neck. Mr. Kim goes behind him and hugs him. He lifts the huge body and performs a suplex, smashing the vice president's neck on the ground. Mr. Kim grabs his legs and throws the vice president on the wall. The vice president feels like Mr. Kim is gnawing on his neck. He realizes that he is being hunted. Mr. Kim slams him once more, and he gets defeated. Mr. Kim claims it is fundamental to attack the neck when hunting. Meanwhile, the old man sees the ship coming back and asks the squint-eyed gangster for assistance. Head manager Du Jiu complains about how he failed to educate the newbie. He then asks the old man for extra payment after he punishes Mr. Kim. Da Young shivers as she gets left alone in the freezer. She hopes someone will save her. Just then, the door opens. She cries and laughs as she sees Mr. Kim. Mr. Kim then drags her out. Meanwhile, other members are shooting the wheelhouse where Seong Ho and Don Jeong are currently. Mr. Kim arrives and wipes out the shooters. He grabs a gun and kills the others. Seong Ho admires the sight of Mr. Kim fighting. Just then, they see the port already, and the two hot. However, they don't know how to stop the ship. The ship crashes into the port, and the head manager wants to deduct Mr. Kim's first pay. He casually asks why Mr. Kim didn't pick up his call, and Mr. Kim claims that he was busy. The manager then reminds him about their rules, and assumes that he has just forgotten them. Mr. Kim stays silent, and the manager gets mad. Just then, the vice president comes out of the ship, and the head manager faces him. The head manager easily kills off the Yakuza, and asks Mr. Kim again. Mr. Kim claims that he couldn't pretend he didn't know, and takes a stance. His beliefs are more important than money. The head manager gets mad, claiming that money is his belief. Mr. Kim notices that the head manager's aura became more dangerous compared to his interview. Mr. Kim apologized, but the head manager punched him so hard that he is sent flying. The manager moves fast and slams him on the ground. However, he missed, and Mr. Kim grabs his necktie. Mr. Kim kicks him and starts counterattacking. However, the head manager looks unaffected, and instead reminds Mr. Kim not to be swayed by emotional stories. He then gets serious and starts attacking Mr. Kim. The old man orders his men to get Dodd Young. However, Seong Ho stops them. The assistant attacks him and gets surprised to see a high schooler. The assistant grabs Seong Ho and slams him onto the ground. Don Jeon protects Dodd Young with a crowbar. Dodd Young glares at her grandfather and screams out loud that he is cheating with her mom. Everyone stops as Dodd Young continues talking and asks the old man if he will kill her now because she knows about his affair. She then reasons to kill the others present because they also so no now. Her grandfather then claims that he will end all of them, and another fighter appears. The general of the Blue Dragon Air and Center comes, and claims that he can kill the White Tiger Force's head manager. The head manager hears him and claims he still has a job right now. But the old man ends their deal, and wants him dead. Mr. Kim then asks the head manager if this is the belief he is talking about. Mr. Kim suggests fighting together for their beliefs. The head manager reminds him that they are still not done talking. Mr. Kim tells him not to get hurt so they can continue later. They surround them, and the general General introduces himself. However, the head manager ignores him. He finishes the small fries and jumps on the general. The general instructs them to bring out the taser guns. They shoot at him, but Mr. Kim uses his threats to save the head manager. The head manager thanks Mr. Kim, but he claims that taser guns are not effective against him. He enjoys the electricity flowing into him and approaches his enemies while smoking. He then beats up the small fries, and they plan to bring out the tranquilizer guns next. They surround the head manager, but Mr. Kim holds them back with his threats. The head manager then confronts the general. The general puts up a stance, but the head manager caves in his head and slams him to the ground. The head manager continues beating him up, and the old man can't believe he hears the sound of a cannon from a human being. The head manager then talks sadly about how his relationship with the former deputy prime minister got sour. He then announces the highest penalty for suddenly breaking the contract. He also asks for more to shut up about his affairs. The old man claims he doesn't have that much money. The head manager then asks if he can take it from family members. He wants everyone
everything from the old man. The buildings, investment shares, business, and even his family's death benefits he tries to flick the old man. But Mr. Kim stops him because his family is watching. Mr. Kim then calls the old man crazy and scolds him. The head manager gets mad and the two argue. Seon Ho tries to stop them. Just then, Hyun Ming calls and informs him that Chief Nam's superior has arrived. Jin Chiao gets mad that his kid is sleeping on the ground. The two continue arguing until the old man's assistant grabs Da Young. The old man then tells the head manager that he will pay for everything. Da Young's parents arrive and call out to Da Young. The old man orders his aide to kill Da Young. Mr. Kim rushes in to save her. However, the head manager attacks him. He claims to just follow the old man's request because of money. Mr. Kim claims that he is on vacation and attacks the head manager. The old man laughs as he watches them fight. Just then, someone stabs him. Da Young's mother stabbed him and claimed that the old man made her life hell. She continues stabbing the old man, and Da Young tries to stop her. Meanwhile, Da Young's father stood there and cried, watching the scene. He knows that his father and wife have an affair, but he pretends not to know. The head manager worries that his financial supporter will die. Mr. Kim stops him and tells the head manager to watch. Da Young's father stops his wife and apologizes. He claims to take responsibility so he can protect his family until the end. The old man falls to the ground, and Da Young's father plans to bear the blame. He also apologizes to Da Young. The head manager asks for the old man's money before he dies. The case ended with the former deputy prime minister's death, and his son took all the blame. However, the old man miraculously survived. Da Young claims that this is the best ending. She then thanks Mr. Kim and his friends who arrived on the scene. Jin Chiao arrived with his team's medical officer, Ian Santiago. Da Young's father also gives his thanks, but Mr. Kim stops him. He claims he was only doing his job, and asks to pay the bill to the White Tiger forces. However, the White Tiger forces plan to punish Mr. Kim. The director lists Mr. Kim's unacceptable actions and announces Mr. Kim's salary deduction. However, the head manager is still furious that Mr. Kim didn't follow their system. He then suggests Mr. Kim open his own company and fires him. Just then, their wall explodes and Jin Chiao and his team arrive. He comes looking for his friend and confronts the head manager. He wants to confirm that Mr. Kim is fired so he can take him instead. The two argue, and the head manager and director claim that Jin Chiao heard them wrong. Just then, Jin Chiao's team member speaks French and calls the two arrogant and ungrateful. The director gets the gist of it and asks for orders to kill them. The French speaker asks to kill them, but Jin Chiao stops him and claims to act gentlemanly instead. The head manager gets mad, and he and the director prepare for a fight. However, the French speaker easily disassembles the director's tactical baton. He also swiftly disassembles things in the office and breaks the head manager's fingers. The man is Albert Kim, the gun dissembler. The director points a sharp object at him, but the head manager tells him to hold back as he sees the elder approaching him. The elder then claims that everyone is stepping on the shadows, and now they will die. The elder asks Jin Chiao if he can sort them out. Jin Chiao stops him, and the head manager continues arguing with Jin Chiao. Mr. Kim stops them and apologizes to the head manager. He also scolds Jin Chiao for pursuing him when he already rejected the Ares mercenary group. The director is surprised that Mr. Kim didn't have a big ego and asks for repentance instead. The head manager claims that if a man yields, it means that he has something to protect. There's a saying that in a man's life, family is the best hostage. Minji comes back home, sees her father back home, and hugs him. Han Su feels jealous of having a daughter. Minji washes the dishes and tells Mr. Kim to rest instead. Mr. Kim feels happy, and Han Su feels like ripping his mouth open. Han Su then asks what happened. In a flashback, Mr. Kim is put on probation, and the head manager reminds him again about crossing the line. Han Su tells him to put up with it because it was Master Zhu who recommended him. Just then, Minji tells Mr. Kim that she will go out for a movie club activity. Mr. Kim worries, and Minji mentions that she will go with a male senior. She assures them that he is not a strange person. Just then, someone calls Minji from the door. Mr. Kim burns with rage as he looks at the student. The student, Yang Tian, asks if the person behind her is her father. Han Su felt something. Tian asks what he should call him. He then calls Mr. Kim father. Han Su gets mad for stepping over the line and asks Tian to apologize quickly. Han Su tries to calm down Mr. Kim. However, he is not listening anymore. Prior to that event, it had been two months since Minji transferred to Yongho High School. She joined a club and fell in love with Tia. Back to the present, a doting Mr. Kim is being calmed down by Hansu, who tells him that Minji looks interested in a filming and directing career. However, Mr. Kim didn't like that Tia called him father and decided to kill him. HNA Su tells him that it is normal for students nowadays to go watch movies. Also, killing him just because he called Mr. Kim father is fine nowadays. However, the third opinion says to kill Tia. The daughter doting Jin Chiao suggests grinding Tia 
Yan's body and turning him into dog feet. Han Su reminds Mr. Kim that Minji is going to be an adult soon. There are things she wants to try, and he can't stop her from trying everything. As parents, they should give their children an environment where they can make their own choices. Jin Chiao calls Han Su bullshit because he doesn't have a daughter. He then tells Mr. Kim to first check what kind of bastard is lurking around Minji. So, Mr. Kim also goes to the movies covertly. He sees that it is a romance movie and hopes nothing happens. However, his love-struck daughter is happy to watch the movie with her senior. However, she heard that it would be a group meeting. Tian also transferred at the same time as Minji, and they coincidentally joined the same club. Tian gets her attention, and the movie starts. However, Minji only focuses on Tian. She doesn't know that her father is already fuming behind them. The movie ended, and the two foes went to a cafe, a photo booth spot, and crane games until it got dark. Just then, Tian wants to ask something, and Minji assumes something romantic. He asks if the man following them is her father. Minji discovers her father is boiling with anger. He tries to give a reason, but Tian cuts him off and introduces himself while calling Mr. Kim his father. Mr. Kim gets mad, and Tian apologizes. Seeing Minji now, Mr. Kim wonders when she grew up this much when he still remembers her as a little thing. He sighs and decides to pretend to close his eyes. Mr. Kim offers to drop Tian at his house. Tian gets in and thanks him. However, he asks why Minji is not with them. Just then, Mr. Kim threatens him not to do anything to Minji or else he will erase his personal records. He further explains that he will also grind Ti Yang into a feed for dogs and fish. However, Ti Yang ominously laughs out loud and claims that Mr. Kim is really weak in front of his daughter. A truck suddenly crashes on them. Ti Yang then tells Mr. Kim that he is creating too many resentments. He informs Mr. Kim that someone wants to meet him. The truck then crashes into them again. What is Ti Yang's real identity? Make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.